so glad you could join me today today we're gonna do something different something more interesting i thought you guys would enjoy this painting and i hope you guys follow along to this painting now let me tell you what i got done up here and while i'm ugh, while i'm doing that let me run the colors across the screen that you'll need to paint along with me it'll be right around here in the same order i have them on my palette i have a 16 by 20 inch canvas pre-stretched double prime and i added a thin layer of linseed oil now the linseed oil just makes it slick and wet so you can blend colors and on top of the linseed oil well before the linseed oil i put gesso i allowed to, the gesso to dry and then i put linseed oil on top of the linseed oil i did a lizard crimson and a touch of yellow ochre and at the bottom i put just like if there was a path of yellow ochre but rather than that it's just clear or it's just linseed oil on well, on everything. So let's get started. Liquid clear could be replaced with linseed oil. You don't need uh, to worry about that. So let's grab a one inch brush. We're going to straight titanium white. And let's get crazy. Today's going to be a more unrealistic painting, but a crazy one. So. Just let it dance upon. Just like so. I, I'm going to want some dark spots. So I'm trying to get lots of that white on. But also maintaining uh, some of that dark spot. So it could show up. And it's dark against light. And all that. So it picks up a bit of the red. And I'm just going side to side to sort of blend it. Just like so. Let's come up here. Just forget about the brush and just move crazy. Just. This is the painting where you can get crazy. And still make it look decent. Okay. X marks. And sort of just back, like back and forth C's. Not really much. And then once you're done with everything, you can just hit it right across. Now, I want a bit more crimson in some of these. So... I'm just going to straight crimson and just letting it go crazy. Realistically, you probably won't see this image in nature, but it's a fun one. It's an interesting one to paint. It sort of this darkens it up so we gotta go back into some white here and there here and there That's a crazy little sky. Something more different in a regular sunset or a blue sky. And you can always go back and forth on how much red you want on. I think I'm going to put on a bit more red. And if you decide you don't want those stringy things you can cover it with the red which i think i i don't want it i want to cover it more with the red i'm just using a one inch but you could use any brush now i'm going to little touch of cadmium yellow little touch and i'm going to some titanium white 
titanium white camium yellow same dirty brush let's come up here and this is our light source and you can go back into some white and pick out a light light source if you get what i mean okay i think that's enough let's blend it out it's too much going on right now so with the clean two inch brush i'm gonna beat the bristles just blend it out with kind of egg strokes just by doing that you get yourself this nice blended look okay go across and that simple you already have your um sky just like that something so simple yet some people struggle with you can always go back and forth with it okay i think i'm gonna leave it at that now i'm gonna grab a palette knife let me go into I thought we could do a nice desert scene today. So I'm going to go into dark sienna and yellow ochre. Some titanium white. Dark sienna and some ochre. Just a bit more sienna. Getting ready to paint, because you can do this, I promise you. Same two inch brush that we used to blend, and maybe right along there. Maybe it's just some sand that lives there. Who knows? Maybe there's more sand that lives right around there. And if you want a light spot, go into some titanium white and you can just put some and if it's too bright for you, just go over it and it'll blend out a bit. It'll mix with the color and not be as bright. I pick colors where you guys could see. So... If you guys don't like a color, you guys could change it. I'm just showing you guys the technique. And I'm letting you guys loose from there. You can lift up a bit, kind of give it another look and go across. And when I was looking at this, I felt like it's too plain. I want a nice big old mountain. So for that, I'm going to some mountain mixture. Cut a roll of paint. As you can see on the edge of the knife. And let's come up here. I don't want to cover that. So I'm going to get it to the side. And sort of just build in what seems to be I call it a desert mountain. You can change it up, make it the way you want it. See? Just like that, you have the basic outline for your mountain. 
And you gotta scratch off as much paint as you can. You want very little paint there. Now, let's grab a two inch brush, same brush I've been using, and just pull it. You can get away with not cleaning brushes, but I don't recommend it. I recommend you clean your brushes and everything because if they dry up, oof. So just pulling, this will allow me on the next step to sort of apply paint more easier. You guys probably know this from all the videos, but if you're new, by doing this, it will remove the extra paint that's on the canvas. And it basically just leaves me with a stain. I was going to say silhouette, but... Either or it could work. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go into a little bit of titanium white into my brown and ochre color. Just a bit more. Ooh, cut a roll. Let's come up here and no pressure. Ooh, and that marble color will, oh, it'll do so many things. No pressure. Just let that paint glide. Let that paint work. Right here, it benefits if you have a delicate hand. delicate and shaky hand because usually mountains are straight so if you have a shaky hand most of the time it'll give it character to that mountain let's put in a bit here just a bit can't have it left out In the shadows, this one hides. It's maybe that lives there. Now, I'm gonna add some more dark sienna to my mixture so it could be more darker. Push up, pull. And you can play back and forth with the color. Okay. And just like so, follow the, following the angles, just tap to create that mist. Probably should have done this before I put in my sand, but it's okay. We learn to work with what we have and what we did. Lift up, that will create like a misty look. Now, I want an extra highlight. So white and a touch of dark sienna. It's mostly white though. And where the light would hit it. Oh, it almost turned out the same color. I blend in too much. Ooh, yes. Perfect. I want it to look texturized. Is that a word? Texturized? I think I made that up, but I want it to look like it has some things going crazy loose where people question themselves 
that's right. But they're not, there's nothing right. Look, you could push this back a bit. Just like so. You can change it. There's no saying when you can and can't. I think right here, boom. Just a little. Okay, I think that's enough for the mountains. Just missed it a bit. When you do this, it makes it look like it's more far out in the distance. Okay. Now, I gotta mix up my... I gotta mix up a desert sand color. So going back to that uh, dark sienna and yellow ochre. And maybe some white. What the heck? Bit more yellow ochre. You know what? Let's get crazy. I think... I think there lives a nice foothill. It's just to distinguish. Just a bit. And look, with the two inch, you can pull to the bottom. And you can pull up and it'll make it look like little tiny trees. Even though in deserts there probably is no trees. But no one knows that. And it's our little painting. We get to decide what goes in the painting. There's no saying what can and can't go on. Only we can decide. Zoom. Nice little sand dune. You can sort of just scrub it on. Doesn't matter how you get the base color, really. I'm gonna pick it apart with highlights though. We'll make it stand out more with highlights. Okay. I'm going to go into some titanium white and a little bit of that sand color. More titanium white. And I think second layer is right around there. Okay, tap your brush into some white, reload, and just fire away. Or you can even tap it, like if it were to be grass. And look at that. You see how the black's standing out more? You can make it stand out a bit more just by leaving some of that black. Okay, now, let's come up here. Let's put in a cactus. There has to be a cactus, at least in my eyes. There always has to be a cactus in the desert. So I'm gonna go into mountain mixture. And I'm gonna go into a little touch of cadmium yellow. Let's come up here. I think right around here. I think it falls down all the way to that. We'll do the 
the cactus with my palette knife. It's just a matter of putting pressure, really. Look, pressure and that blade kind of opens up a bit. And it'll widen out your your um your marks or whatever. I forgot the word. But many can many people they like to do their cactus with a brush and it's okay. It's great when you do it with the with a filbert brush. Ooh, you can make wonderful cactuses that way. But I want to teach you guys different techniques, how to accomplish. So it's up to you guys. Maybe. Shoot. Maybe there's a baby one right there. Little shaky hand will help you out. We'll be your friend here. Okay. I'm going to go into a little bit of cadmium yellow to that mountain mixture. Just to brighten it up a bit. Now, the light's probably hitting this way since it's on this side. So, I'm just going to touch it. And tap, tap and pull away. That way, when the paint dries, there's texture on there. And it makes it appear more interesting. Makes it just so the people want it touch your painting to see if it's really texture or a look maybe a few here and there here and there Ooh, gentle gentle you don't want to overdo it because then you lose all your dark parts and maybe I'm going to a brighter one. Just a bit bright. Ooh. Okay, gentle, gentle. Don't overdo it. Because if you put it everywhere, then it loses that illusion of that extra highlight. So you just want to put it in some spots, not all the spots. Now, let's finish up the sand over here. Just tapping my brush. And all I'm doing is really just blocking in that color. Okay. Some white. And let's come up here. I think it comes down. Like so. Something like so. I want to end that look of evenness. Just tap in a bit of color. Whew. Now, let's go ahead. Sorry, some of the noise is weird. Let's go ahead. Let's put in a nice old bush. I think our bush lives. Right there. You can make it to appear like a weird shape. But I thought we could do something like that. Let's go ahead. 
I'm gonna grab a little linseed oil, just a little, to thin out my paint, so the next layer sticks on better, because a thin paint will stick on better onto a thicker paint. And just like so, you have yourself some highlighted bushes that live around there. You know what? Now that we have yellow ochre on our palette, I'm going to load it up full of paint, as you can see. And let's come up here. And when you're painting bushes, think about the layers they, they come in. Don't just put it in all at random. Because if you put it all at random, it's going to blend in, it's not going to look the best, and you're not going to be happy. Or you might be happy, but I'm just letting you know. Usually, the best way to go is thinking about each little bush. Think about them. They have personalities too. They just want to be there. Let's scratch some sticks, twigs by using the corner of your palette knife. Okay. Now, we got a couple minutes. Well, we got one minute, but still, I want to put in a crazy big old tree. Going into mountain mixture, and I think I think my tree will live right there. It's a big old tree. And I'm going to show you something neat. You can mix up a nice dark brown by Mountain Mixture and Dark Sienna. That's a nice dark tree color. Look at that. Nice and dark. And just tap let go. So when your paint dries, it's texture dies. I'm hoping that's a word. But there's so much texture when it dries. And usually for me, when I sell a couple paintings, the paintings that have texture on are the ones that sell quicker. So this will help it sell quicker. A little bit of dark sienna, a little bit of white. Cut a roll. I want it darker. Okay. And just tap it. Tap and pull your palette knife away. Just like that. And you can try to blend it out. Okay. And just something like so. Pull this out just a bit. Well, I think that's we could call this painting finish. I really hope you enjoyed this painting. This painting is a nice little interesting one. And it helps you to learn everything. Well, not everything, but it helps you learn the basic materials. How to use them and how you can achieve certain looks with it. 
I'd like to wish each and every one of you the best of luck with this painting, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye, my friend.